For example, a cardinal doctrine of the Christian faith is the death and resurrection of Christ. This notion is so important that the Bible itself states, and if Christ be not risen, then is our preaching vain, and your faith is also vain. Yet it is very difficult to take this account literally, for not only is there no primary source denoting this supernatural event in secular history, awareness of the enormous number of pre-Christian saviors who also died and were resurrected immediately puts the story in mythological territory by association. Early church figures such as Tertullian went to great lengths to break these associations, even claiming that the devil caused the similarities to occur. Stating in the second century, the devil, whose business is to pervert the truth, mimics the exact circumstance of the divine sacraments. He baptizes his believers and promises forgiveness of sins. He celebrates the oblation of bread and brings in the symbol of the resurrection. Let us therefore acknowledge the craftiness of the devil who copied certain things of those that be divine. What is truly sad, however, is that when we cease the idea that the stories from Christianity, Judaism, Islam, and all the others are literal history, and accept them for what they really are, which are purely allegorical expressions derived from many faiths, we see that all religions share a common thread, and it is this unifying imperative that needs to be recognized and appreciated. Religious belief has caused more fragmentation and conflict than any other ideology. Christianity alone has 34,000 different subgroups. The Bible is subject to interpretation. When you read it, you say, I think Jesus meant this. I think Job meant that. Oh no, he meant this. So you have the Lutheran, the Seventh-day Adventist, the Catholic, and a church divided is no church at all. And a church divided is no church at all. And this point on division, which is a trademark of all theistic religions, brings us to our second failure of awareness, the false assumption of separation through the rejection of the symbiotic relationship of life. Apart from the understanding that all natural systems are emergent, where all notions of reality will be constantly developed, altered, and even eradicated, we must also understand that all systems are, in fact, invented fragments, merely for the sake of conversation. For there is no such thing as independence in nature. The whole of nature is a unified system of interdependent variables, each a cause and a reaction, existing only as a concentrated whole. You don't see the plug connected to the environment, so it looks like we're free, wandering around. Take the oxygen away, we all die immediately. Take plant life away, we die. And without the sun, all the plants die. So we are connected. We really must take into account the totality. This isn't just a human experience on this planet. This is a total experience. And we know we can't survive without plants and animals. We know we can't survive without the four elements, you know. And so when are we going to really start taking that into account? That's what it is to be successful. Success depends on how well we relate to everything around us. I'm very aware of the fact that my grandson cannot possibly hope to inherit a sustainable, peaceful, stable, socially just world unless every child today growing up in Ethiopia, in Indonesia, in Bolivia, in Palestine, in Israel also has that same expectation. You gotta take care of the whole community or you're gonna have serious problems. And now we have to see that the whole world is the community. And we must all take care of each other that way. And it's not just a community of human beings. It's a community of plants and animals and elements. And we really need to understand that. That's what's going to bring us joy, too, and pleasure. That's what's missing in our lives right now. We can call it spirituality. But the fact of the matter is, joy comes from that bliss of connectedness. That's our God spirit. That's that side of ourselves that really feels it. And you can feel it deep inside you. It's this amazing, wonderful feeling. And you know it when you get it. You don't get it from money. You get it from connection. Now, if that isn't a hazard to this country, how 
are we going to keep building nuclear weapons? You know what I mean? What's going to happen to the arms industry when we realize we're all one? <laughs> it's going to fuck up the economy. The economy that's fake anyway. 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 Fake anyway. <laughs> Which would be a real bummer. You can see why the government's cracking down on the idea of experiencing unconditional love. Once we understand that the integrity of our personal existences are completely dependent on the integrity of everything else in our world, we have truly understood the meaning of unconditional love. For love is extensionality, and seeing everything as you and you as everything can have no conditionalities. For, in fact, we are all everything at once. If it's true that we're all from the center of a star, every atom in each of us from the center of a star, then we're all the same thing. Even a Coke machine or a cigarette butt in the street in Buffalo is made out of atoms that came from a star. They've all been recycled thousands of times, as have you and I. And therefore, it's only me out there. So what is there to be afraid of? What is there that needs solace seeking? Nothing. There's nothing to be afraid of because it's all us. The trouble is we have been separated by being born and given a name and an identity and being individuated. We've been separated from the oneness and that's what religion exploits, that people have this yearning to be part of the overall one again. So they exploit that. They call it God. They say he has rules. And I think it's cruel. I think you can do it absent religion. outmoded social systems have broken apart and work together to create a sustainable global society where everyone is taken care of and everyone is truly free. Your personal beliefs, whatever they may be, are meaningless when it comes to the necessities of life. Every human being is born naked, needing warmth, food, water, shelter, everything else is auxiliary. Therefore, the most important issue at hand is the intelligent management of the Earth's resources. This can never be accomplished in a monetary system, for the pursuit of profit is the pursuit of self-interest, and therefore imbalance is inherent. Simultaneously, politicians are useless, for our true problems in life are technical, not political. Furthermore, ideologies that separate humanity, such as religion, need strong reflection in the community in regard to its value, purpose, and social relevancy. Hopefully, through time, religion will lose its materialism and basis in superstition and move into the useful field of philosophy. The fact is, society today is backwards, with politicians constantly talking about protection and security rather than creation, unity, and progress. The U.S. alone now spends about $500 billion annually on defense. That is enough to send every high school senior in America to a four-year college. In the 1940s, the Manhattan Project produced the first true weapon of mass destruction. This program employed 130,000 people at an extreme financial cost. Imagine what our life would be like today if that group of scientists instead of working on a way of killing people, worked on a way to create a self-sustaining, abundant world. Life today would be very, very different if that was their goal. Instead of weapons of mass destruction, it is time to unleash something much more powerful. Weapons 